I would like Right, today I would like to go a little bit into um, the new uh, design possibilities workflow and some tips and tricks of the new uh, SmileCloud Rubicon version. Um, I just want to do a short demo case, explain the steps, go into small details and uh, mainly help people around in the new interface which on the bright side is a very minimal interface, very clean, but on the other hand for some people it might be difficult to find their way around, at least in the beginning. So smile design as you all know starts and is all, all about the face. Whenever I do a smile design I always uh, open the documentation and always select the highest or the widest smile. That's because you're going to have the largest amount of information in one place. You want to see as much of the gums as possible. Now, the second that you select the face, it will be automatically recognized by the system and it will automatically propose a crop, which is uh, quite good here, and also an alignment, which again you can go in and tweak it but again, it's quite uh, good as, uh, as it is now. The next step is the lip contour. Now the lip contour is going to be again detected, but feel free to adjust it. You just go in, move these dots around to the inner contour of the lip. Again, nothing fancy, just take your time to do it nice. Then the next step is the restorative space. Here is where it gets important. Now the first thing you notice, I did a double click. When you do a double click, you will do like an automated directional zoom on the smile. So double click your smile, double click portrait. Now the first decision I'm taking is always where I'm gonna place the midline. And normally if you're gonna go let's say for a ortho scenario you can place it anywhere you want because you're going to move structures around when you're going for pros you are limited to the existing midline slash a couple of tolerance uh, right or left depending on how invasive you want to be but here i'm going to keep the midline now the next thing as you go into finer details is you have to decide the uh, zenith curve and the smile curve now here the smile curve, I'm looking at two things. Clues that I have in the existing smile and for me clues can be the position of these cusps and the canine which are in an, let's say, ideal position. So it pretty much will give me a uh, reference of where my incisor ledge should be. Now I can change this curve and as I change it you can see the, n the number in the middle is going to show me how the proportion of the center changes, which is a um, very relevant aesthetic parameter. When it's yellow, you're in the ideal zone, 75 to 85. If you're going to go like this, for example, 88%, you're going to see the number is white. That means when you go like this, it's going to be too squarish, or like this, it's going to be too long. So try to stay as much as possible in the um, yellow area. If you're not in the yellow area, you should have a good reason for uh, why you are not there. Now, um, the next thing uh, here is that you can click on this um, uh, dots and this gives you like uh, uh, the amplitude of the curve, which you can change. You can do this symmetrically or if you press the Alt key, this is asymmetric movement. The same applies to the position of the curve. You can have like symmetric or asymmetric movement. And in this particular case, again, I'm going to define the restorative space in a way that I am trying to be, let's say, least invasive. So I'm gonna do something like this the first quadrant and then opt for 
maybe slight asymmetry on the other quadrant. So again, here you have to take decisions when you play the, play the zenith curve. Are you gonna adjust the tissue? Are you gonna not touch the tissue? It's up to, to you. Here, I think that you might want to do that because of proportion. So you see here, right now I have like, uh, for me, this is too squarish. So then I can go in and change. Now the way this works is when you're gonna move this central point, you move the grid completely. So I'm just gonna move this to simulate a little bit of crown lengthening and then I'm gonna again readjust a little bit here. And again, I can change the amplitude of the curve, all right? Now, if I want to tweak it to uh, an even finer level, I can adjust proportions. Again, with the Alt key, can be symmetric or asymmetric. I'm looking usually at the, this area, at the canine when I'm doing it. You can always move the teeth around uh, one by one after, so just try to match the canine so it's in an okay position. And I'm going to change it a bit here. Good. Now, after I'm done with this, I'm going to click search. And this essentially becomes like a search engine and render the libraries. Now, you can see the color of the gingiva in the rendering is, is too dark. And then you can change this. And you can see when you click like the picker, which is this one, you can go in and select an area where the system will take the color and you can see it's taking a little bit from the lip so now you can go and put it on a nice area of the gingiva which has a good color let's say here uh, be careful because sometimes if you put it on a reflection area you might have a too uh, light color and here again i would use this uh, color of the 21 then I'm going to click match color and now you can see that the colors are very nice and matching the um, patient's um, picture. This is a, I think, very, very nice uh, uh, feature to uh, get like a photorealistic result. And now also in terms of uh, color, before I go into the actual libraries, there's one single color bar here where technically speaking this color bar is age you go here it's gonna be like older chroma goes uh, up value goes down you can see now this is younger what happens is uh, chroma goes down value goes up like this so here feel free to, to play but the colors generated are quite um, realistic and adapted to the existing lighting in the picture now here i have my libraries that are generated through my search criteria and here i can go through them select whatever i like and then after i select i can i can fine tune um usually what this means you can see here you have like a color gray like a color uh, legend what is yellow will match your search criteria so if i'm gonna go on this ones it's very likely that uh everything that i have uh been selecting in the restorative space uh is gonna match and in that will help me or the technician tremendously in uh, 3d because the, the, all these shapes have the same proportion, the same uh, contact area, the same uh, uh, criteria for uh, an easy uh, 3D design. If you see it uh, white, it's like a 10% tolerance, which means 
you might like these shapes, but they will, you will have a harder time in 3D to adapt them to existing clinical scenario. And if you go down, you will get all the way to gray areas, which will be probably difficult to uh, preserve in the process. When you go in 3D, you have to alter them a lot so they match. Now, um, technically speaking, you can see that it's uh, pretty much like a four-click workflow. The face, the lip, that you can adjust at this uh, each step, and the restorative space, and then you're in the libraries where you can just go in and uh, uh, change whatever you want. At any point, you can go back and change anything. For example, you can see the lip here is not ideal, so I can just go, zoom in, adjust this area, and a little bit this area. And then I can go back to my design and I don't have to go again through the steps and it already looks nice. Now, if I want a finer level of uh, detail, I can adjust things like papillas, line angles, which are, for example, relevant in this case. Uh, whenever you crown length, and you have to understand that the line angle architecture of the existing teeth will always converge in the root. So it also gives you an idea of where you can place a prep line and where you cannot. For example, if you're gonna do this, it's very likely that you're never gonna be able to put a prep line here because the, the tooth will converge under. So it's not gonna be realistic. So try to follow the existing, um, the existing, let's say, clues that uh, biology gives you. Now, um, another thing here is measuring. So, in order to measure, you can calibrate. So, I can measure anything I want. Let's say this central. Let's assume this is 8, 8 millimeters. 8, all right. And if I accidentally make like a measurement, like I just did, if I want to delete it, I just throw it out of the screen. But now, if I'm calibrated, I can measure anything. I can just uh, move the mouse from one place to another and measure. Now, what you can see here, I have my centrals 10.2, 11.2, sorry. 11.2 is a little bit too much for this case. Why? Because I know the guy. The guy is like uh, not exactly uh, two meters high. So this would, let's say, not be uh, ideal. So then you can go back and adjust a little bit, usually here the incisal edge. Why? Because you can see there's also a little bit of wear in this case. Uh, and it would be, let's say, functionally better. So whenever I design, I'm, I'm always thinking where the idea should be, and then I'm gonna worry about how am I gonna do that? Am I gonna cut this canine, or am I gonna move this canine? Am I gonna do like a social six here in the lowers, or am I gonna just adjust it with, uh, I don't know, amyloplasty or a minimal pros or whatever. But the idea is, as I'm thinking, I can, visualize in real time and I can go in and uh, be able to uh, render this in real time and communicate it uh, to the patient. Now here you have like an uh, opacity slider that you can uh, go and uh, you know toggle to see uh, how uh, the design relates to the initial situation. And also there is like a, a progressive opacity when you zoom. So whenever you're gonna zoom in, you're gonna get like this uh, um, transparency effect so you understand the um, relationship between the design and the initial situation. For the ones who are used to Smart Cloud, you know that we always uh, did like uh, the intro view which is uh, been used to fine-tune the uh, restorative space specifically. 
And here you can still do this and more. You have this icon here, or if you're gonna press I from images, shortcuts are a new thing, which I will cover a little bit at the end. Um, here you can add not just the second image, but as many as you want, which allows you to do what we did in the past when you align like an um, uh, intraoral and here pretty much it works in the same way it's just that you have better control over the alignment which in the previous version was not ideal because you couldn't uh, uh, see it well enough so here again you're gonna do the same two points alignment and when you're gonna drop all four points, you will see like with the um, opacity, the two uh, pictures on top of each other. And of course you can fine tune here. So when you're done, you click done. You're gonna get your design again in the same um, view, in the internal view. And this is synchronized with the face. So let's say that I'm gonna move this lateral like this. And then if you go to the face, you will see that this lateral is again moved here. Okay. So let me just again go back here. Now also the colors are matching for each individual picture. So here I can again match the colors if I have like different colors in the picture or whatever. And you can see how well they match. Um, another thing is you can still have the view like a portrait view. If you're gonna press like P, you're gonna have like the two side by side. So here you can see in real time if I'm modifying something on one view I'm modifying in technically all views because here I can have as many pictures as I want and I can use this to, I don't know, design on multiple uh, portraits like with multiple lip position or uh, check with a picture of the prep or uh, follow up a two year ortho case how it changes in time. So there's many ways you can um, apply this. Going back to the portrait, I'm going to decrease a little bit the, the value here, so it just looks more natural. And here, for example, the second that I want to finish this design, I can simply close it. And then I have this uh, before and after slider that I can uh, uh, use to show to my patient. I can immediately share with the patient and he will get it on his uh, phone, on his uh, mobile app, on the passport. Um, I can go in if I want and do another design. So let's say I want to make another version. I'm just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to change the library. Uh, the restorative space will be pretty much the same in uh, most designs. It will just be uh, a matter of uh, shapes and uh, perception. So let me do something which is different here. This is okay. I'm always looking at things like, is it realistic to put the prep where I have this virtually? And you can see I have to adjust some areas. All right, so it's very easy to just move to move it individually. With control, you can rotate them. Again, I will slightly decrease the centrals. I will change these laterals. And here, when I select one tooth, and you can see I have all the other options of laterals. So I want to shape, let's say, something more like this. Here, it's pure subjectivity and intuition. The only thing is that normally you have to understand that we use our subjectivity and what gets the case acceptance is the patient's subjectivity. So it's very nice that you have a tool that you can simulate this virtually before you go into printing things and boxing up and all this stuff. So it gives you like an idea, a way to visualize very fast. This is all like using natural shapes. Let me decrease a little bit this lateral. I will turn this a little bit 
because again the main thing is I need to be able to put the prep here so, and this and decrease a little bit bring this smaller in so here I don't like the embrasures between the cannons and the laterals so I can just go in and change the axis a little bit here change the axis a little bit here as well right. midline is not perfect I can just adjust it a little bit okay. So let's say this is a second, uh, second version, you just close it. So you can see here I have this version and this version and you can play literally as much as you want. And here on the side, these are shareable and visible in real time with the team and uh, with you know all the people that work with in the case and here I can have like all the chat with the team or with the patient regarding the design so let's say we decide on one design then you can just go and you can download that specific library and it will package into a zip archive that you can open to see like a normalized library see I'm gonna download this so this is the fastest way if you want to go like to a 3d let's say uh, design you can just download the library position according to to the face which is something I will probably cover in later videos or you can uh, service it have somebody uh, do it for you and these are just a couple of the options which you have so remember you have like uh, first of all you have a communication tool very important nowadays you have like a tool to render real libraries and to um, most importantly to help you curate and select libraries which match in 3d because this is probably the most single most crucial thing to actually reach the value proposition of uh, copying nature and uh, all in all, you get this in a very uh, agile package and a very simple interface that you can literally go from, you know, four clicks to get from start to finish, or you can put more energy into the design process, go in and fine tune and add details and uh, it's, it rewards you. Not only it rewards you that you have more precise and better designs, but it's also like real time and easy to connect to anyone working in, in the case. So yeah, uh, enjoy, enjoy designing guys and uh, have a good one.